In the last video, we learned what the quotient rule was. So in this video, we're going to be doing some examples by utilizing this quotient rule. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. So we have this example here. Obviously, it's a quotient or a big fraction, a big division. So we want to take the derivative of it by using the quotient rule. I have the quotient rule up on the top right in case you forgot it. Um, remember, it's very similar to the product rule with the exception of instead of adding it, we actually subtract and then we divide it all over the original denominator squared. Or the trick to remember the rule is seeing the song low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So that's kind of an easy way to remember it. Okay, let's go ahead and do the derivative of it by utilizing the quotient rule. Um, let's use our appropriate notation. We're taking the derivative of our y equation, and our variables are t. So this is with respect to our t variable. So I'm going to just write out my quotient rule here, but we can skip this step and just start taking derivatives. So my low, or my original of the bottom, times the derivative of the top piece minus the original of the top piece times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom square. Or if there's a different way that we can write the notation, instead of using the DDT notation, what we can do is we can put a prime on this, and so that means I need to take the derivative of that piece. And I could also have done the same thing with this over here. So prime means we need to take the derivative of those pieces. Either notation that you want to use, or in fact, even if you skip this step, that would be fine too. So my original of the bottom, my low d high times the derivative of the top, which is 2, minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 5. Low d high minus high d low, all over the bottom squared. Now, the derivative part was probably the easy part. The simplification part, or the algebra part, is probably the more complicated part. Um, some things to clarify here, because I see this a lot in the homework. Something you cannot do is I cannot come through and reduce those two pieces right there. We can only reduce fractions when it's in multiplication format. And since this is subtraction, that means we cannot reduce either of those two pieces at this time. So that's a big no-no. OK, so what we do need to do to simplify this is we need to distribute this 2 through. And then we need to distribute this 5 through, as well as we need to distribute this negative through. On the right-hand side, since I'm distributing the negative and the 5 at the same time, the way that I think about it is I put this negative with my 5, and then it's like distributing a negative 5. Makes it a little bit easier to do in that process. So that gives me a 10t plus 8 minus 10t plus 15. And that is all over. Now, you might think it might be beneficial to simplify this or to multiply out our denominator. It's actually in a better format when it's in multiplication format. So we are going to leave the denominator exactly as is. In fact, there's not very many cases where we do anything extra with the denominator. Most of the time, we just leave it in that format. Then, combining like terms, my positive 10t and my negative 10t cancel out. And so all I'm left with is 8 plus 15, which gives me a 23 in my numerator. And that is still all over the denominator squared. 23 over 5t plus 4 quantity squared. And so here we have the derivative of this guy utilizing our quotient rule. Okay, so now that we've seen another example using the quotient rule, let's move on to yet 
another one. Um, this one here asks us to find the rate of change, dy over dx, and we need to do that when our x naught variable is equal to negative 1. Now, we know rate of change. That's just another fancy way of wording the derivative, and it even tries to give you a big hint here by saying do the derivative. So we're going to take the derivative of this one here, and then we're going to substitute in our x value. I have the formula listed up here on the right, so I suggest that you pause the video and do the math to this one on your own and see what answer that you can come up with. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is obviously take the derivative. It is a quotient or it is a fraction, so that means we have to utilize our quotient rule. We have a y equation, so the derivative notation that we're going to use is dy. Our variable is x, so that is dy dx with respect to the x variable. All right, my formula, the original of the bottom minus the derivative of the top. Instead of writing it out this time, I'm just going to actually take the derivative of it. The derivative of 4, that's a constant, so that derivative gives me 0 minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of x squared gives me 2x, and the derivative of my constant, yet again, gives me 0. And that is all over the bottom squared. So one more time, low d high minus high d low all over the low squared. Okay. Now, this one's pretty easy to simplify because I have 0 times something, so all of this piece just becomes 0. So I don't even have to worry about that. So the rest of it gives me negative 8x, and that is all over the original of the bottom quantity squared. Remember, we usually leave that denominator in our factored format because it's going to be more beneficial to us in that format than any other format. So if it just asks for the derivative, this is the answer that we came up with. Okay, now we want the rate of change when x naught is equal to negative 1. So we need to substitute in negative 1. The notation that we use is dy dx evaluated when x naught is equal to negative 1. So that gives me negative 8 times negative 1 all over a negative 1 squared minus 3 quantity squared. On the top, negative 8 times negative 1 gives me positive 8. On the bottom, negative 1 squared gives me positive 1 minus 3. And so that gives me a negative 2. And so when we square it, it gives us 4. And so our derivative, dy dx, evaluated when x naught is equal to negative 1 is equivalent to 2. So this is our rate of change when x naught is equal to negative 1. You can always check the rate of change problems by using your graphing calculator. So let me pull that up. So I have my graphing calculator. Let me plug in my equation. 4 divided by x squared minus 3 Notice I put my whole denominator in parentheses, so I did it that way so the calculator reads it as 4 over all of that. If I left out the parentheses, then the calculator would interpret it incorrectly. I can graph it on my standard window, so zoom and then the fix button. And then if I'm looking for the rate of change, I'm going to find that underneath my calculate feature, so second, trace. Option 6 gives us dy dx, and then I substitute in my specified x value, which happens to be negative 1 in this problem. So I select negative 1 and hit enter, and therefore it tells me my dy dx is 2 point lots of zeros and then 4. Remember the calculator sometimes does some misleading rounding errors. So we know that this should be interpreted as dy dx equals 2, and that is, of course, what we came up with here. So that confirms that we have the right answer. 
I'm going to stop this video because of time, and in the next video I'll come back and do a couple more examples of utilizing the quotient rule.